So we've had the M2 Mac Mini in the studio for a little over two weeks now, and I wanted to give you guys my overall thoughts, my consensus, and my review of who I think this is for and why I think this is the best computer on the market for the price by far. So without further ado, let's talk about this M2 Mac Mini two weeks later. Let's get into it. So I did want to mention to begin with is that I am using the baseline M2 Mac Mini. Now we do have some reviews in the pipeline on the M2 Pro Mac Mini, so definitely stay subscribed if you're somebody that wants to learn a little bit more about that one. But with this video, we're talking about the baseline M2 Mac Mini, and that allows me to bring up the most important feature and the best feature by far of this M2 Mac Mini, and it has to be the price. The price to performance ratio of this M2 Mac Mini is absolutely absurd. So by retail, you can get the baseline M2 Mac Mini, which comes with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, and we'll talk about if that's enough in today's world, but that'll cost you $599 retail. But then also, there's already deals on Amazon for $499, and if you can go into the education store, which is mostly US-based, but if you go into the education store on Apple's website, you can get this for $499 brand new. Okay, so let's briefly go over what you get for that $599 price point of the M2 Mac Mini. So in the box itself, you literally, all you get is the Mac Mini and the power cable. You obviously get the Apple stickers as well, but just so you know, you will need to purchase a keyboard, a mouse, and a display of some sort in order to actually use the Mac Mini. But as a computer itself, it is hard to pass up on that price point and that price to performance that you get for it. But internally, you get eight gigs of RAM that you can't upgrade to up to 24 gigs. You get 256 gigs of storage. You do get an eight core CPU, and then a 10 core GPU, which is actually two more cores on the GPU side than the M2 MacBook Air, which is twice the price. And then some other upgrades to consider is that you do get Wi-Fi 6E support in the Mac Mini, which again is a new Wi-Fi 6E protocol in order to be able to get faster Wi-Fi speeds. Now, if you don't have a Wi-Fi 6E router, then this isn't gonna matter to you, but you will get support for it with the Mac Mini if you do have a Wi-Fi 6E router. And then also you get Bluetooth 5.3 compared to Bluetooth 5.0 that you would get on the M2 MacBook Air. And if you guys do want to see a video of which one is the better buy between the M2 Mac Mini and the M2 MacBook Air, click on the link below because we did have a nice in-depth video about two weeks ago, kind of giving you guys everything that you need to know about both of those computers. So in terms of ports on the rear of the machine, you do get two USB-A ports, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, two Thunderbolt 4 ports. You also get an HDMI port. You do get one gig ethernet, which you can't upgrade to up to 10 gig ethernet if you have the ability to actually power in to up to 10 gigs of speed, which if you do, kudos to you but that is upgradable for, I believe, $100. And then finally, obviously, you get the power button and then the power input in order to plug in the cable. So that's all the I.O. that you get on the rear. And again, we are talking about the baseline, but if you do go with the M2 Pro version, you get an additional two Thunderbolt 4 ports for a total of four Thunderbolt 4 ports, but we are dealing with the baseline model, so I'll stick to the ports that we have right here. And now that we got all that stuff out of the way, I did just wanna talk about how I've been using it and what I use it for, and if the baseline model is enough for you moving forward, especially if you plan on using this computer for two to five, to maybe even seven years. So I've been using it as my main email machine. I've been using it for a lot of Slack. I've been using it for communication, both internally and externally, and then for some creative work. So if you guys do see, when I did run my test to see how quickly all the applications open, the applications, they open up extremely fast. And every single time that I do this, whether they are first party Apple apps or third party, you know, Microsoft apps or whatever the case may be, all these applications, they open up extremely fast and they open up fully with zero issues whatsoever. And you can see when I open 20 to 30 apps, they open instantaneously. And now among some of those apps that I do use, most of them are native Apple apps. So I use a lot of iMessage, I use a lot of Safari, but I also use things like Chrome and the Microsoft suite of products. So for Chrome, I can open 30, 40 tabs, have two windows with 20 or 40 tabs at the same time, and it still runs perfect. I haven't had the ring of death show up at all while using the Mac mini, and I'm able to do all the normal day-to-day -day tasks that you would probably think are a little bit less intensive, but still require a decent amount of CPU and RAM. So think multiple tabs in Chrome, think being able to have multiple emails open, think multiple YouTube videos, you know, being able to play audio in the background while still doing stuff in the foreground. All that stuff is definitely possible with this baseline model. So a great normal daily use case for me is having Slack open and constantly communicating through all my Slack channels, answering a bunch of emails, whether it is PR emails or work emails or whatever the case may be, maybe having a YouTube podcast on the bottom right hand corner of my screen so I can listen to some podcasts while I'm actually doing all the busy work that I'm doing. Also, I have my live feed of Twitter to make sure I'm keeping up with all the tech news that's going on at all times. So let's, that is a normal use case that this Mac mini was able to handle with no problem. So think multiple applications open, 
multiple windows open at the same time. And also maybe I'm reviewing a Google Doc, which is something that I do pretty frequently when I'm scripting, especially. So if I have all those things open with literally zero hiccups, everything moves and functions as it should. And that's still, again, with just the eight gigs of RAM and the 256 gigs of storage, but it's all done with that M2 processor with the CPU and the GPU powering everything. And then in terms of how hot it gets, or if you hear the fans, there is an exhaust on the rear of the Mac mini to push some airflow out and get the hot air out of there. But at the same time, even when I'm pushing this thing to the most that it can be pushed, I barely hear it if at all. Sometimes if I put my hand behind it, I'll be able to feel the air being pushed out, but I don't hear it and it doesn't feel hot whatsoever. So you don't really have to worry about overstressing this machine too much because the chassis is honestly so big for what is actually in there. But then you might be wondering about the creative side, right? Is this going to be enough for you to create some small YouTube videos, some small TikToks, some small, you know, short form content or an Instagram reel? Maybe you have a business and you have used a Mac mini as a main hub. You have a small business and you want to promote it, you know, through your marketing channels, but you need to create some content around it. This is going to be able to handle that. No issues, right? I edited the whole M2 Mac mini versus M2 MacBook Air video on the actual Mac mini and it worked perfectly fine. And I'm dealing with 4K footage in both 30 and 60 with slow-mo shots, with filters, with being able to stabilize the footage and there was no hiccups whatsoever. Everything rendered in real time. I was able to scrub through all the data very easily. Now, I personally edit everything on my iPad Pro, so that's one thing to consider, but when I did test it, it worked extremely well and it exported in real time. So if you have a one minute video, it'll export usually in a minute or less. So keep that in mind if you do wanna use your Mac mini as your creative hub because you can edit video, you can edit photo, you can create thumbnails, you can plan out your videos, you can go into notes, everything that you would need to maybe ideate, to create, to script, and then to finally film, edit, and post can be done with the Mac mini. And then the very last use case that I do want to bring up for the casual user, and I'm talking about the casual gamer here, so take, keep in mind my vocabulary there. If you are a casual gamer, then this is going to be more than enough. So you can see me playing a kind of Call of Duty copycat, which is directly from the App Store and through Apple Arcade, which it does work, it works extremely well. You can also play NBA 2K on here, which works super, super seamlessly, and I love to see that because you can use your Xbox controller and then just be playing NBA 2K. And again, eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. Now again, I wouldn't be entering any eSport competitions and you don't get 120 frames per second or anything like that, but overall, if you just wanna spend half an hour playing a game to pass some time while you know something downloads or something loads, by all means, this is gonna be more than enough for you to be able to do that stuff. And in this last section, what I wanted to do was talk about what I would upgrade first in terms of priority, right? Because some people, they want to get the baseline, go for the baseline if that's going to be enough for you. But then some people want to make sure that they're future proofed. Maybe they have some more intensive tasks, or maybe they just deal with a lot of data overall where they need a little bit more storage. Now, me personally, I'm a big fan of having external storage and not spending a ton of money on internal storage from Apple because it does get expensive very quickly. Now, yes, it is faster to get internal storage directly from Apple because it all just communicates faster and you'll be able to move stuff a lot more seamlessly. But getting an SSD like a T5 or a T7 from Samsung and just keeping that directly plugged in or maybe even something from Satechi, which I'll have in a future video, and you're not really timing how fast things move around, then by all means, skip out on the internal storage and spend more money on the actual RAM. Now, I would recommend going to 16 gigs of RAM if you can afford it, if you do wanna spend an extra $100 in order to upgrade that, because it will future-proof for you and it will help with some things moving forward, maybe when you're in year three, four, five, six, in order to make sure that you can handle all the apps that are coming forward, because eight gigs of RAM is a little bit on the lower side, at least theoretically, but in practice, it has been working extremely well. So at the end of the day, the best feature of this Mac mini is got to be the price. The price to performance ratio of this thing is unheard of, right? You get an M2 Mac mini, you still get your 8 gigs of RAM, you get an extra two cores of GPU, you get new Bluetooth 5.3, you get the new Wi-Fi 6E, you get to extend to two monitors with the baseline version and three monitors with the M2 Pro version. So a lot of things going for this Mac mini from a price standpoint and everything that you get out of it. And on top of that, compared to the M1 Mac mini, Apple actually dropped the price $100, which is something that, again, we've never really seen Apple will do before where they upgrade the internals but bring it to you at a lower price you know by all means apple thank you for that but who is this mac mini for right because again it is a mac mini it is a desktop computer right it's not as portable as a laptop like if you're a college student maybe the m1 or m2 macbook air is a little bit better for you because you will be moving a lot and you won't have the ability to have a desktop and a laptop but in my opinion this mac mini is for the person that's stationary a lot of the time maybe it's a home office computer maybe it's something that you use at a dorm room maybe it's a computer lab computer as well so a lot of teachers will be using this mac mini but even though yes it's not as portable as a laptop 
for what it is, the desktop is relatively portable. So I can see somebody getting an M2 Mac mini and having two workstations. Let's say you have your home workstation and then you have an office workstation that all just connects via USB-C. Bring your Mac mini with you wherever you go because all you need is the Mac mini and the power cable and then plug in, set up, and then you're good to go on both of those battle stations or those workstations. So I do think that there is a relative portability to this Mac mini, but again, obviously not as portable as a laptop, but that is what I think it's for, right? It's for the family that wants to share a desktop computer around the house, for the, the teacher that has a computer lab with a bunch of Mac minis, for the student or for the work professional that has a couple of workstations or can afford to have a desktop solution and a laptop solution, but you will not be disappointed with this Mac mini for whoever this is for. But that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And leave some comments down below. Did you purchase the M2 Mac mini? Are you planning on getting it? What is the first thing on your priority list to upgrade if you do not wanna go with the baseline version? Let me know in the comments down below. And then also let me know what you use it for if you do have an M2 Mac mini. But that is gonna do it. If you guys wanna watch some more iOS, iPadOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.